Welcome to the new idea session. Um, if you are here, that means that you're probably mulling over uh, of your idea and how to start a company. So I'm going to go quickly through the steps that are required to do it. And then at the end, I'm happy to answer your questions. Just briefly to give you an idea on who I am, um, I worked in the 90s in Silicon Valley through two startups and went IPO twice and then um, worked at the University of Pennsylvania and built them accelerator that started 19 companies. And now I work at the Science Center and uh, working with the Global Soft Landing Program. Uh, so Jay, give me a sign if the uh, network will not work for us, but otherwise I'll just go through it. All right, very quickly, I wanna start on the dark side of starting a startup. Most new ideas fail and you need to be prepared for it. Um, I'm just giving you some uh, pretty dire statistics. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, the um, reality of a start startup world. Um, you know, 80 to 90 percent of new products fail. We know that 90 percent of mobile apps are not active and so forth. So just be uh, armed with the statistics because information is key here. Um, it does happen to the best. This is uh, the slide with all the failed Google products. So don't feel bad about uh, uh, startups failing if even giants like Google failed so many times. Um, it happened to the biggest. These are failed Microsoft products. Um, and in case you're wondering, Google keeps tab of all the failed Microsoft products and Microsoft keeps tab on all the failed Google products. And now we have this wonderful information from them. And uh, indeed, it also happened to Steve Jobs. We all know of all his failed products before he uh, invented the unicorn of the iPod. Anyway, so armed with these statistics, if you still want to start the company, I congratulate you because it's a really great idea. Um, why would you want to start a company? Well, first of all, it's excellent equalizer. Um, in case you guys want to guess what's the average age of the person who starts a company, it's 42. Uh, so it's uh, equally uh, accessible to young and old. Uh, rich and poor, you're all in the same position. When it's not a great asset for a corporation to be poor and unknown, it's actually an asset for a startup. And another good news, recession or economic downtime is a perfect time to start a company. And if you look at the number of companies that started in 2008 and nine, it was because of the economic recession. Um, but you need to be prepared because of the earlier statistics that it's not going to be a rosy road. But hopefully with the information that I'm going to give you today, it will be a little easier. All right, so if you still want to start the company, the biggest, and this is the most important slide in my view, um, the biggest asset that you can do for yourself is fall in love with the problem and not the solution. What do I mean by that? So many people create a product fall in love with product and not with the problem. If you're in love with the problem, you can try many solutions until you come up with the right one. But if you're in love with a solution, this is it, right? You have no other way to go. So um, look at the problem that you're solving and then try to come up with as many great solutions to see which one actually sticks. Um, there are five major ingredients that contributes to success of the company. Um, the original idea, timing, good team, business model or execution, and funding. I'm going to talk through all five and then we're going to see which one is the most important, okay? All right. When I say fall in love with the problem and not a solution, um, I wanna give you this example. So in Africa, there was a great problem with uh, infant mortality for prematurely born children. And the problem was if they're born in the rural areas, how to quickly put them in the incubator that is expensive and only available in the big hospitals. So there was a challenge on um, how to improve the situation. And people started to think, okay, 
How can we create faster ambulances to get this prematurely born infants into the hospitals? Maybe we can create an incubator that will fit into the ambulance. Um, until someone came up with a brilliant solution, what is the real problem that they were trying to solve? The real problem was you want to keep premature baby at a constant temperature, uh, hopefully near his or her mom, and keep it at that temperature until baby matures. And so they came up with the solution of the baby carrier that keeps constant 37 degrees Celsius temperature with a wax that melts and isolates baby in a perfect environment. So again, if you concentrate on what is the real problem that you're trying to solve, not faster ambulances, not smaller incubators, but actually how to keep baby at a constant temperature until it matures, you come up with the best solution possible. So that's what I mean by falling in love with the problem and not the solution. All right, then you need to validate if anyone actually wants to buy the product or the solution that you came up with. And that's what I'm going to talk to, um, to the audience tomorrow at the pre-typing workshop. But basically pre-typing is a technique to let you validate the market to see if people actually want your product or solution without putting any money sometimes or a little bit of money and um, very little time. So I encourage you to tune in tomorrow at 5.30 to Venture Cafe. We will going to go at length, but basically when you're validating your idea, you need to pay attention to data, not the opinions of people, not the opinions of your friends, but real data from the market. And I'm going to teach you tomorrow how to obtain it. Um, do by all means go and talk to potential clients. Uh, you are not going to get answers just at your desk, right? But keep in mind that potential clients also give you opinions, which is important, but it's not um, all you need to know. You also need to know other data from the market. Um, and rely on data, on objective data um, that you collect when you're building your solution. Timing. All right, so I put two sides to this slide. So on the left, um, we all know that uh, Kafka and Van Gogh were not um, um, validated during their time, time uh, lifetime. And, um, you know, the, uh, the fanfare came much later. Um, on the other side, Airbnb and Uber, these are their original first logos, as you can see, um, started in a, a downturn. And uh, it was a perfect timing to when they started. Airbnb started as an air mattress um, when uh, three guys went to South by Southwest and couldn't afford a house and decided that they are going to rent out portion to, of their house that they were renting to three other people. And that's how the idea came to be because it was such a dire economic um, situation and uh, voila, the timing worked in their favor. Same with Uber. So timing is important. Um, building a team is very important. You cannot do it alone. Um, when building a team, it's really important to bring in the right people don't bring people that are like-minded, like, that duplicate what you do. Bring people that can fill the holes and um, bring to the, to the company things that maybe you are lacking, right? Um, being flexible, being risk-taking, having that entrepreneurial bug is important, but so is integrity, right? So when you're evaluating your teammates, um, look at the traits that they have. Um, the best founding team is supporting each other, has great communications. Um, there has to be a chemistry. When I worked at the University of Pennsylvania and we were looking for CEOs to start companies that are, were invented by professors at Penn, chemistry was the word we used quite often um, because chemistry is something that just happens, just like in a good marriage. And, um, and uh, the, you cannot undervalue that. Um, Jake, is there any way I can remove the slides on my right because they obscure my view of my slides and I cannot 
see what's written on it. Um, you know, like your pictures that I see all the pictures of you guys. Um, any way I can remove it? Uh, let me see here. But if not, that's okay. I'll just, um, just I, I don't remember what's written on the far right. <laughs> Maybe you can tell me. Oh, uh, complimentary. Uh, so yeah, so that, and that's what I meant previously. So look for complementary skills. If you are an uh, extrovert and great at sales, you might want to find an introvert who is great at financials, right? So look for the skills that you might not have that are really important for the team in the company. Um, so business model. My favorite quote of all times, vision without execution is hallucination. So true for a startup. So you might have a vision, but how to bring that vision to the market is really important. So when you go through different solutions to the problem that you identify, um, that solution should include your business model. Is it going to be a freemium? Is it going to be B2B or B2C? And you can try to validate different business models before you zero in on the one that actually works. But, uh, you know, just having a great idea obviously is not enough. Um, bringing that idea to the client through whatever means you can come up with is the most important thing here. Um, getting funded. And again, a lot of what I am saying is obvious, but just putting it in a sequence so you can think through, I think becomes really important. Um, so to get funded, there are three necessary things that you need to have. One is an elevator pitch. It's really important. I can't stress enough. You never know who and when and how you're going to meet the person that will feel the pain that you're trying to solve and will become interested. So you need to have this one magic sentence that really describe what, you, what you, your company is doing, that answers questions of what, how, and why. Um, really great example is Mint. Mint.com is a free, easy way to manage your money online. Really descriptive. You need to be able to explain your company in 30 seconds or less while you're riding in the elevator to the 11th floor. So just keep that in mind when you, it's really comes up with a wordsmithing to precisely describe the problem and the solution. Don't use any expert jargon, just keep it really simple. And yes, remember to have fun because starting a company should be a fun endeavor. Um, second thing that is really important is the pitch deck. No one these days reads the 60 page business plan. Um, maybe if you apply to a bank loan, you will need to come up with a business, business plan. But if you're raising money through angels, friends, family, um, venture capitalists, you need to have a pitch deck. So I usually advise companies to start with a five slide pitch deck. Um, and there is a great article written by a guy who raised 10 million um, with five slides. So I, I, by Tim Young, I put it on a slide so you can search for, for it. But usually uh, for the first meeting with the VCs, people put together 10 slides. And what, what are on those slides? So first you state the problem. And when you state the problem, try to state it the way so that the VCs can relate to it. The best reaction you can get from them is, ouch, I know what you're talking about. I feel it too. I, I know that pain, right? Because once you get them to feel the pain, they will be more enthusiastic about the solution. Then you state the solution. Then you talk about the product that actually solves. What, what is the solution? Then you talk about the business model, how to get this product into the hands of the clients. How big is the market opportunity? Is it a niche product or is it a, a wide problem that you're solving? If it's a niche, try to come up with a solution that is bigger. Um, absolutely look at the competitive analysis. It's a red flag if you come to pitch to VCs and you say, we don't have any competitors because that means you're new to the market, you're inventing your own market, no one understands this market yet, 
So please don't come to the um, VC pitch saying that you don't have any competitors. Do your due diligence, find competitors, and then describe how you better, cheaper, faster, whatever your advantage is to your competition. Um, absolutely talk about your management team. You selected the best people for your company. Talk about you, talk about your experiences, talk about your teammates. It becomes really important because obviously they invest not into the product, but into the team that can bring this product to the market. Um, and then put your financial projections. Try to be conservative. Um, no one likes to see just a hockey stick. Try to um, defend it and explain how you're going to achieve the growth that they're looking for. And then uh, the last slide is how you're going to use the funds, how much you need and why you need that much. Uh, when you're raising the money, try to raise enough money to last you for at least 18 months uh, because no one wants to go fundraising again after six months. You want to be able to build the, the product to the next milestone when you need the next tranche of investment, okay? Um, and the last thing that you need to raise money is an executive summary. So you have your elevator pitch, you have your pitch deck. What is executive summary? I put an example here. It's basically a one pager. That becomes really important. You cram this one pager with as much information as you can in a pleasing way um, to get people uh, quickly understand what the company is about and to get them excited in a, just like a one, one minute look at this one, one pager. Uh, the most important piece of this one pager is the first paragraph. That is the, what we call the grabber. That is something that needs to immediately grab attention, describe the problem in a way that everyone will understand it and feel it, um, and then describe your solution. This is just one example of the executive page. There are tons of templates available online. So find the one that you are most comfortable with um, and use it. But these are the obvious things that you need to state in your executive summary. Um, if you have a great team, absolutely put team here. Um, your financials should be here. It's something that you leave behind when you meet someone important. Um, some companies like to have it in front of their office. You never know who is going to pass by. Um, but this is something that you also send in your first cold email if you're trying to reach um, investor. Okay. All right. Now I want to talk to you about uh, really interesting data. So the very first incubator, in the true word of a business incubator that happened, happened in Los Angeles in 1996. And it was called an idea lab. And these are the first 12 companies that they nurtured. Some of them we know today, some of them we don't. But this is like at the height of the dot com boom. And since then, Idea Lab incubated over 180 companies, actually. They have a really great experience of uh, turning um, unicorns onto the market. So they were in a really good position to look at all the companies and see which ones succeeded and which ones did not. And uh, using this data, we now can look at what, what really worked for them. So we talked about five ingredients. They identified the same five ingredients that I talked about. The idea, the team, business model, funding, and timing. Um, so this is you know, how novel or different your idea is, um, efficiency and adaptability of your team, clear path to generating revenue, um, raising money, how much you already raised, like how important that is, and timing, right? Are you too early? Are you too late? So here I want to poll you guys what do you think is the most important ingredient of this five ingredients? Come on. I see that there are more than one of you. So, okay, good. All right. All right. Cool. All right. So, uh, aha, uh -huh. let's keep coming. Okay, good. All right. 
most people voted jake yeah okay so i see that most of you voted for the team um and then uh, the uh, idea and the business model well can i go to the next slide jake okay so let's reveal the answer can you get the poll out of the screen because i can't uh, let's see or maybe i can uh i got it i got it all right. yeah, yeah all right so um what do you know the most important turned out to be the timing um look at the airbnb right whoever before 2008 would think that renting their green couch in a living room is a possibility to a total stranger right um if you think of uh, so they at, at uh, idea lab they had a company that was uh, um, putting videos out very much like youtube but it tanked because the broadband was, was not there yet and then six months later youtube came in and voila we have a, a youtube sensation so timing turned out to be the most important ingredient of all and it's also the one that is truly difficult to gauge so um, again tomorrow i will be talking about uh, possibilities of taking data from the market and um, uh, trying to figure out if the timing is right for you the second you were absolutely right team um, is really important in the execution and then the idea itself and then the business model and the funding turn out to be at the bottom um, a lot of companies strapped together their resources and uh, got to the next milestone without uh, raising any funds until they were able to do it. So this is a truly um, an interesting slide to look at and keep in mind when you're building your company. Um, let's see, I keep pushing on the wrong buttons. Okay. So uh, um, top factors that led to failure are again, no market need. So again, validation of the market becomes really important. Run out of money, not the right team, um, steep competition, or the wrong pricing. Okay, so this, this is also really interesting data to look at. All right, so to conclude, because we're running out of time a little bit, execution matters a lot, but timing is really key. Um, build a complementary team becomes really important so when you start thinking you cannot do it alone when you start thinking who to bring on board um look for complementary um, um skills and also skills that you don't have and um this is probably one of my favorite slides so first you will be ridiculed look at uh, twitter they couldn't raise money everyone was like are you crazy 140 characters <laughs> Um, then you will be violently opposed until it was complete. It, it will be completely accepted. So keep that in mind when you're building your team um, and, and your company. And with that, I'm going to open up for questions. We have three minutes. All right. Uh, any questions, anyone? Uh, just. Be sure to unmute yourself if you are speaking currently. All right. Well, Karina, uh, thanks a lot. Really appreciate you joining us today for this. Um, everyone, as we mentioned at the top, Karina will be uh, doing another talk tomorrow on prototyping, a tool for market validation. That'll be at Venture Cafe. Uh, we have it linked at the top of the chat here, but I'll also be sending out a follow-up email to this meeting, so I'll link it there as well. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining. I have so, a quick question. Sure. Hi, yeah, this is Mark DeGuzman from Rutgers University, uh, working working from home. Uh, uh, yeah, I just had a quick question. So these uh, statistics, those are from the that first incubator or from the data from that incubator. Um, so I work at the Rutgers i site program in Rutgers University, and we help uh, faculty entrepreneurs and student entrepreneurs. And I'm trying to understand if these statistics 
a hold for all technologies or they, you know, cause we deal with life sciences technologies and software innovations, uh, some engineering. Um, so does this, these statistics really hold for everything? I mean, is there, from your experience, is there any guidance on uh, what one type of innovation uh, should focus on more than the others? Is there like a breakdown that you can offer suggestions for? Yeah, and uh, thanks for that question. I actually worked at i as a mentor at UPenn. So I oh, am great. Very, I'm very familiar with the program and I think it's an excellent program. Um, I truly believe that timing is the most important ingredient for whatever innovation you're working on. Even within the large companies if they're, as they're working on a new product, uh, but no matter if it's a technology or life science, um, sometimes in life science, you will be working on something that, um, that is too early for the market um, or maybe, maybe already too late. So yes, uh, I would say it's across the board and across the fields, timing and the team are two most important ingredients. Um, what you guys are doing with i is excellent as the customer um, discovery, but tomorrow I will talk about how, what you can do before even doing customer discovery, because customer discovery is important, but a lot of times it leads to just opinions and you need to get real data. So tune in tomorrow. I don't, I don't want to sound like a salesperson, but it's, a long, it's about 45 minute seminar that I'm going to specifically talk about how to validate the market before you start validation of the customers, which is also really, truly important. Yeah, and so what's that called, the pre-typing? It's called pre-typing, yep. And it's before you even build a prototype. That's why it's not a typo. It's, <laughs> a, it's a, before you build a prototype, you want to pre-type, yeah. Okay, great. I'll look, uh, I'll, I don't, unless you could put it in the chat, I'll just look for it on the uh, link. Uh, yeah, it's at Venture Cafe tomorrow at 5.30. Okay. If you Google Venture Cafe Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know, Jake, if you have a link. Yeah, here's a, a link to their website. Right oh, now. good. Excellent. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Sure. All right. Thanks for the question, Mark. Thank you. All right. Well, with that, I guess uh, we'll wrap things up here. Thank you again, Karina. And uh, thank you, everyone else, for joining us today.